Hello, welcome to today's session of organic chemistry. In today's session, we'll be talking about these three important organic reaction intermediates. We call these reactive intermediates in organic chemistry. Not all organic chemical reactions are one steps. So whenever the organic chemistry reactions proceed through multiple steps, they usually produce these reactive intermediates. And these are carbocations, where the carbon has a positive charge, carb anions, where carbon has a negative charge, and free radical, where carbon has an unpaired electron. Okay, we'll focus today's discussion on these three reactive intermediates. So the first one, carbocations. As the name suggests, these are cations. They have positive charge. The only difference is that the positive charge here is centered on the carbon. So whenever you have a methyl group, CH3 group, with the carbon bearing the positive charge, that's called methyl carbocation. Whenever you have a positive charge on the carbon, which is connected to one more carbon, that's the primary carbocation, okay? R here stands for alkyl group, which could be methyl, ethyl, and so on. Now, when the positive charge is concentrated on a carbon that is in turn connected to two other carbons, that's a secondary carbocation. And finally, whenever you have a carbon with a positive charge that is connected to three other carbon, that's a tertiary carbocation, okay? So now we know what carbocations are, the different kind of carbocations. Let's talk about the stability of the carbocations. Which one is more stable? You can see here, as you move from methyl to tertiary carbocation, the stability of these ions increases. We'll talk about the reasoning in the future session, maybe the next session after this. But for now, I want you to remember, methyl carbocation is the least stable, and the tertiary carbocation are the most stable. Now, let's talk about carb anions. It's pretty intuitive as well. As the name suggests, these are anions. That means they are gonna have negative charge, but the difference or the specificity is that the negative charge is centered on the carbon. So if you have a CH3 with a minus charge, that's a methyl carbocation, carb anion, sorry. If you have a carbon with a negative charge, which is connected to one other carbon, that's a primary carb anion. A carbon has a negative charge and that carbon is in turn connected to two other carbon, that's a secondary carbon ion, okay? Now, if the negative charge is concentrated on a carbon, which is connected to three other carbon, that's a tertiary carbon ion, okay? These are the different kind of carbon ion that we'll learn in this course. Now, if you see the stability of carbon ions, it's actually just the opposite of carbocation. In carbocation, the tertiary was the most stable and the methyl was the least stable, right? Now, in case of carbon ion, the methyl carbon ion would be the most stable and the tertiary carbon ion would be the least stable. Like I said, we'll talk about the reasoning in our next session. Now, let's move on to free radicals. These are free, ra the free radicals means the carbon in this, in this species or the intermediate would have an unpaired electron. Whenever you see an unpaired electron in a carbon, that's a free radical carbon carbon-free radical, let's say, right? So it could be a methyl carbon-free radical with the, with the unpaired electron concentrated on the carbon, only one carbon. If the unpaired electron is present in the carbon, which is connected to one other carbon, that's a primary free radical. If the, if the unpaired electron is in the carbon, which is connected to two other carbon, that's a secondary free radical. And if the unpaired electron is in the carbon that's connected to three other carbon, that's a tertiary free radical. Now let's look at the stability. If you look at the stability of the free radical, it's pretty identical to that of carbocation. As you go from methyl to primary to secondary to tertiary, the stability of the carbocations would go up. Again, the, the reasoning for why the, why the trend varies as such, we'll talk about in the next session, okay? So uh, I, want, I want you to understand a little bit about the structure of this uh, carbocations, carbanions, and free radicals, what's their, what, their, what their orbital and the bond structure looks like. So if you look at the, the structure on the left, this is a carbocation. Just by looking at the structure, you can see because it, it has a carbon which is connected to three groups, not three carbons, three groups, and there is a positive charge in this carbon. That's a carbocation. Now, whenever you have an atom which is connected to three electron groups, that's gonna have a trigonal planar structure. So that's why carbocation will always have a trigonal planar structure. And the empty p orbital, which can fit in electron, will be perpendicular to the plane of the bond. Okay, that's what I want you to understand. 
Carbocation has a planar structure with the empty p orbital, which is ready to take an electron, is perpendicular to the plane of the bond first. Now let's go to carbanion. In carbanion, we know there are three bonds, and also we know there are two extra electron because electrons because this is a negatively charged intermediate, right? That means this carbon has four electron domains or electron groups. If you remember the Vesper theory, any any structure with an atom that is connected to four electron groups is going to have tetrahedral structure, right? But if there is a lone pair and three bond pairs, that's going to be a trigonal pyramidal structure or a distorted tetrahedral structure. So carbon, carbon ion will have a trigonal pyramidal structure. There is sp3 hybridization. If we talk about hybridization in the future, I'll explain you what that means. But what I want you to understand, it's not a planar structure. It's a trigonal pyramidal structure where you have this three of this bond sort of coming down the plane. And there is one, this uh, p orbital with the, with the pair of electron uh, just up the plane. Okay. So now the free radicals are a little bit tricky, right? These are not completely four electron domain species because you have three bond pairs but the lone pair is not a pair, it's an unpaired electron, right? So it's not completely a three electron domain species, not a four electron domain species. So this is sort of like a three and a half electron group species. So the structure of this would be in between a trigonal planar and a trigonal pyramidal. So if you see it here, it's not like a perfect flat plane, and also it's not as, as, uh, as hinged as the as the carbon ions, okay? So it's, it's, it's gonna be in between a uh, uh, trigonal planar and trigonal pyramidal. That's, that's how the structure of carbocation, carbon ion, and free radical looks like. So earlier I talked to you about the trend in the stability of carbocation, carbon ions, and free radicals. In our next session, we'll talk about why those trends are as such. What, what factors come into play while you, while you explain the stability of carbocation, carbon ion, and, carb, uh, and free radicals. There are three important effects, hyperconjugation, inductive effect, and resonance effect. I'll explain the detail of these uh, uh, factors in the next session. Until then, goodbye, thank you.